idea. Um, I don't want to go there yet because the exhaust is hot still. I might accidentally go around the exhaust there. So let's go on the other side of this front wheel real quick and let's continue on. So, then I'll call Amazon customer service and ask them what's the deal with sending me a lock without a combination to open it. <laughs> so, <laughs> or presetting it first. That is hilarious. Nothing else in that box other than that little bag there with a few numbers which didn't make any sense at all because none of them even slightly felt like it was going to open Sesame. Oh, that's okay. Here we go. <clears throat> nice. Felt really good riding though. I felt like my old self again. Oh man, I can't imagine the places we can go on that scooter. I'm thinking of taking it like really nice areas like you know, the Bear Creek, the, you know, the forest area, stuff like that. You know, when you're a kid, you're thinking like, yeah, I'm going to have a special vehicle. I'm going to be able to drive to all these crazy terrains and do all kinds of adventurous rides. Just like when you're on a mountain bike, you can do that too. But something with the motor in it just makes you feel powerful, you know? Just like your Star Wars. If you're, I'm not even a Star Wars fan, but I can imagine how it's fun it is to ride on those little racing vehicles where they... You know, they have their special vehicles all souped up for their racing battle. You know, just like that little chasing scene. So here, guys, just got to put some more rubbing alcohol. I might as well clean most of my rim up really nicely, all of it, really, not just the area we're going to do it on. Because it's not really that dirty. So I'm going to have to look. I can even get underneath it, actually. But we might not have to move it at all, the front one anyway. I can probably almost get all of it. I can go from the back here, look at that, see I can reach my whole arm back here and finish the rim. So, yeah. The rear one we might though, because it has too much more stuff in there. Smell it now to break. That's rubbing alcohol for you. Make sure it says rubbing alcohol. There's other alcohols too, I'm sure it'll work, but that's what's recommended on the sheet, I believe. I didn't even read the instructions, but let's check it out. Let's see what the instruction tells us. Looks pretty cool though. It looks like some, some science solar panel set up here. Can you imagine <laughs> this little sheet here cost you 33 bucks? Can't imagine that. Or close to 39, I can't believe. Okay, so here we go. Okay, also contact us directly for any questions, issue, or concern regarding your product. We have 100% satisfaction guarantee. Uh, we can also make custom makes and design and decals with the same material. Cool. Wash hands before handling the rim tape. Uh, which I will. <laughs> uh, clean rims with rubbing alcohol before applying for best results. For easy removal of rim tape, blow dry warm first and use WD-40. Hey, look at that. Not, we're not the only one that recommends WD-40. For sticky remains, clean off WD-40 with rubbing alcohol. Understandable. You don't want to leave that lubricant there to take off the first adhesive. You got to chase it back down with something dry. We can use uh, parts cleaner, which is sort of another, you know, drying substance. Okay, do not use wet method soapy water when applying rim tapes. Okay, definitely. We're not trying to tint the thing. And let's see what else it says. Do not overlap. Strip by more than one third if, or you may end up short. <laughs> At least one spare strip is included. All right, cool. Only one spare huh, for this whole four wheel setup. <laughs> That's in case you short yourself, you can cut from that one strip, not one strip for each set. So one strip to make sure you complete the whole four uh, side of the, each wheel, right? All right, so don't worry about that. We might not even try to overlap it as much as we can. Okay, do not use chemical or clean rims. Use water, mild soap, or rubbing alcohol if needed. No, rubbing alcohol dries fast and is not chemical. Cool, good to know. Thank you, sir. That's it, and just gave us their website, Custom Taylor 33. I don't even know what Custom Taylor 33 means. It might be some guy who started it. He might start out with some kind of 33. You know, like Baskin Robbins, what are they, Baskin Robbins, is it 31 flavors or 21? I can't remember, Baskin Robbins something, right? Baskin Robbins 31 flavors or something like that. So this is the Custom Taylor 33. You can find it all over the place. Amazon, uh, eBay will have them too. They, got, they sell them everywhere. And that's it. Apply. Okay, here goes. Please contact us for, uh, before application if the curve strip receives do not seem to match up exactly with the curve of your rim, especially for small rims and all bicycle, or you do not have the rim lip space need it for custom smaller width strips okay the strips here look like they're good about maybe half an inch and i think our let me see our rim lip Ooh, our rim lip is pretty close i think it'll get in there i think they're about half an inch 
So we're really going to be working on the edge, the edge, which is perfect. So we're going to be working on this one edge here because it'll be funky if you put it inside, right? And this is definitely smaller. This is probably what, 11 inches, not 13. I'm sorry, maybe 12 inches here. So this is the full 13 right here. We're not going to put it over the lip. We're going to put it around the lip. So anyway, I just got oil in it. Look at that gray just came on to me. All right, so let's go back to cleaning it. I'm going to be cleaning it for a little bit, guys. So bear with me. Let me continue my journey. A lot of rubbing alcohol left. So what I'm going to do instead of contaminating this rubbing alcohol by, you know, putting this rag in. And then I'm just going to pour it on the rag. There you go. Look, you can pour it. It's almost like a soda here. I don't think uh, plenty of alcohol would help us a lot. But it's really a good cleaning agent, though. You definitely don't want to use it if you're trying to lubricate something or keep things, you know, squared away. So. But yeah, man, it cleans wonders. Unbelievable. Check this out. See that right there? I couldn't get before because I'm thinking, oh, here, look, I'll do this example right here, right? Really dirty, right? And you normally can't get it with just regular water. Or even brake cleaner wouldn't do. Look at that. Rubbing alcohol. Bam. It's nice and silver again. Or nice and have that alloy, you know, finish again. Wow. I should have done this in the beginning. So we'll do this and then we'll even go and give our nice, once we get everything situated first, we'll get our nice wheels there. A little good tire spray. Look at this guy right here in the corner here. Look how dirty that is right there. See that? Right there. Oh, actually, I'm going to see what I can do with alcohol. Okay, I'm going to pour some more alcohol in here. Take it straight on it. There we go. Oh, a little too much there. That's okay. See that? Oh, wow. Look at that. The only thing I can't get off is a scrape, of course. But look at that. That's why they recommended this stuff. Cause that thing takes off any dirt that you can get off previously. I'm not sure because the alcohol has a, little, has a little acidic stuff to it or something. But it's not chemical, right? That's what it says. The alcohol is not a chemical. You can probably drink it too, probably. But I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, yeah. The smell alone gets you a little lightheaded too, by the way. Because that's what gets you kind of sedated. A little rubbing alcohol. Look at that. Nice and clean. By the time we're done with this first rim, I'm sure the exhaust will cool down. It'll be perfect timing for us to go over there and get the exhaust taken care of as well. So we're not going to be here, you know, wastefully. So while we're here, we might as well do the best we can getting this rim, the best looking rim it can get from its condition there. This is the original rim that came with the scooter. All we did was change the, the valves. You can see here, the valves are set up and everything like this. So... What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep rubbing it as much as I can here until it's gonna pretty much stop at about five or six more minutes. And then before I continue, I'll, I'll do my best to catch up on cleaning all the rims so you guys don't have to sit through it. Because I'm sure cleaning is a basic stuff you guys probably know yourself already. How to try to get much of the crit area here if you can. But the, this, this towel is soaked with alcohol, so it's good for me. But the smell alone isn't. <laughs> Very fumey. Oh wow. Oh, gotta, gotta brush it out. I'm sure there probably is some buffer. You can probably use two to get all the little crit area that you can't rub off within a single stroke. But so far I'm not having that trouble right now. Just want to make sure I get whatever exposed out in the open clean. Without damaging. Right there. You even have to get a little bit of the fork oil grease off. Can't wait to peel this guy off too. The reflectors here. See, these guys can go. I think we did the best we can here and clean this area already. Right? I think it's ready to go. Okay, let me get the top area. See that? I can swerve pretty much around this whole top area. 
So that's no problem there cleaning this guy here. Let me get a little bit more of my rubbing alcohol, pour it on my shop rag and go for it. Almost like using like soap water here, just rubbing alcohol. Make sure we get all the little dirt that might stick to our adhesive and not have our adhesive stick properly. Especially around the areas of the rim here that we need to make sure it goes all around clean for best result. It doesn't say you have to, you can clean it the best you can, but it's from good experience, I guess. I'll just follow it. Next time I know that, clean it with alcohol. Even when you're actually spraying your, your metal gasket uh, for your uh, cylinder head, you might want to use maybe rubbing alcohol to clean that first before you apply that copper spray. That'll probably stick on it better if you have a little bit more clean residue surface to have the spray attached. And also it could be because that can is probably a year old maybe. It's been used prior, a year ago, and it's probably leaking. Maybe that's why it's probably not that great. People don't expect you to use a, a year old can for copper spray. Figure you use it by now, right? All right, so this is side here is probably the best I can do. Maybe I can collect this a little bit more. Try to get every little crit area clean, but I think it's pretty damn good. I think it's not gonna be more cleaner than that, so. We'll work on the other side real quick again. I got two more minutes with you guys and then you guys are gonna start seeing me wrapping up the rear one when you guys come back. So, oh, this guy's a little spill on me. Didn't have the cap fully closed. So I'm lucky it's not brake fluid. So here we go. Ah, there we go. I'm surprised it says dries fast, but it's not really drying fast when it comes to us rubbing it though. Still look like it's still on the cloth, wet enough for us to still rub it. In fact, you can also clean your disc brakes too, if you want to make sure that these brakes here are good. You can clean it with some rubbing alcohol. These guys right here, because they're not putting any extra chemicals on your disc brakes. You're just pretty much cleaning all the residue or dirt that's built up from there, either brake pads or whatever. Uh, so that's what I'll do. I'll clean our disc brakes here with also some rubbing alcohol. That's why brake cleaners is nothing but drying agents that cleans things. Just don't want to get into the bear bearings or something like that. Keep those lubricated. It's just the, the disc itself you want to make sure it grips. There we go. So it's going to be shut off in about one minute or you'll see me continue on. You might not even notice that. But you'll see another video segment of me getting started in the rear one because I'll start, start having to get this guy clean. So less than one minute you'll probably see this segment here end and you'll see a new video segment. Oh yeah this is dirty here. It's pretty dirty here in the little grime area. See that little star there? See that? Right there you, you're gonna see me clean that in a little second here when you come back you'll probably see it clean already all this little area here dirty right so you'll come back and you'll see it voila it'll be clean I guess I did have two hours of video deleted now <laughs> I didn't realize I had the, the edit slide video still on there so that one's actually in a different folder I didn't realize so I deleted those now and I got about maybe two hours of recording as long as the battery allows me to but you can see here like I promised voila it's clean I even tried getting this little crit area here but it's kind of a little bit challenging I'm trying to squeeze my towel in from the other end. Maybe I can drag it a little bit and try to help each other rub back and forth. But it's okay. We got most of it, which is cool. I didn't really plan to clean my rim this good. So I'm glad those rim tapes allow us to focus on cleaning and rubbing alcohol. I would never thought about that, really. That clean alcohol substance. All right, this, this guy is next. Okay, I might have to move my rim a little bit because I can't get to this side here. This corner is a little bit more challenging to get to because it has the brake cables and everything in the way. 
or maybe let's see i'll try oh i should have capped this never want to leave the rubbing alcohol open like this you know i'm going to get the alcohol vapors you know what do you call that sprite out or something so put the cap on it right away you want to keep it keep it good all right so let me see if i can get my best here to get my arm from this side here and go underneath it yeah i can i sort of can there Rubber alcohol. Makes your nose run. So for sure we'll definitely won't put the tape in conveniently like this. We'll make sure we'll we'll definitely wrap it nicely. Let's try to see if I can get that little back area. Which I can here if I rub the towel like this maybe. Try to get really nice and clean. See that I'm trying to rub the towel back and forth on the this side of this. I can get the top. I can't get into the little underneath the, you know, underneath crits area without having to put my hand in there, unfortunately. So I'll do the best I can. Just kind of wiggle my finger in there. But that's probably the best I can get in there. And get this brakes again one more time. Ooh, that was dirty. Let's see how good that is. All right, we're almost in the back area now. All right, ready to clean the back now. I think it should be cool. But let's start away from the exhaust side. Give it a little bit more time. It's been what 20 minutes already. Uh, since we cleaned this front wheel So let's get into a rear one. I think the alarm I have to wait for one more day I'm trying to try troubleshoot the alarm. Let's see how much energy we have left I think every little step of the project here takes a little bit out of us So we'll do our best um, Let's see I had a pretty good breakfast. I had a Whopper customer was nice enough to actually get me a little Burger King gift card. I wasn't sure I wasn't expecting it, <laughs> but uh I guess he really appreciate he's from overseas so he really appreciate us helping him out getting that product to him so which you know i really appreciate the business already but it was nice of him to go out of his way to get us a little bit like a treat i guess like a little gift it was pretty good i bought like quite a bit of burgers for the family all right, so there we go. We got that clean. A little smudge here, huh? Yep, APM said his whole clutch, not the front plate here, but the, the back plate just kind of completely, you know, spun off the NCY clutch. The back plate, uh, the male, I guess is considered female, I guess, where the pin hooks onto it, just a plate covering, because everything else was still in good shape. The Benjing clutch bell. Uh, the clutch shoes, everything, the springs. The only thing damaging was the CVT cover where it banged up. It kind of did a ninja star in it because I guess it broke from the three. Because you have these little studs here, right? These are the, This is the female one. And it goes in like this. It has like three little bangs, I guess. Or four maybe. I can't remember. One, two, three. Right here, I guess. Yeah, so it's about three. One, two, three. And where there's another plate behind that, it sits a little bit outside um it's just a little bit like borderline outside the bell so when it broke off it didn't remove this at all from the axle it just kind of spun off and did like a sort of swang it swang its old plate like a ninja star and it cracked the um cvt cover and he was just tuning a scooter he was probably going six thousand rpm so i don't know <laughs> uh hopefully he'll share some more insights and pictures because i really want to see that it might maybe have been as effective but there's not really any way of proving it, unfortunately. It's kind of hard. Um, but I do trust him, though, and I do believe him. And so we'll probably help him out and take care of that with him. So here we go. Here we go. There we go. Oh, why am I cleaning the CVT cover? I got started on the CVT cover, and I just kept on going around the CVT cover. Now, my battery's hooked up, so you got to be careful. If it can spin 
the back of the clutch like nothing like a, a rag doll. Imagine what it can do to your fingers easily if it can break the um, the CVT cover, which is a little bit harder aluminum. But it can still crack though, you know what I mean? It's not like that hard. All right, so here we go. I'm going to put a little bit more. <coughs> Ooh, I'm getting drunk. I really am. I feel like I'm... I feel like I'm at a bar getting tipsy here. A lot of rubbing alcohol. <laughs> a little tipsy. Is that what they say? I don't even drink. Um, I don't never. I don't think I ever got drunk. I might have got buzzed when I tried a few times. Uh, uh. That was like a peer pressure moment, I guess. But I never really enjoyed it. I mean, getting drunk i kind of like to know what the food tastes like we normally when you have those hard shot liquor the rums and stuff especially when they serve in the caribbeans and you know duty free and everything those things are freaking strong uh where you can't feel your tongue so you're like you're about to eat some good barbecue you know some jamaican barbecue or whatever a caribbean style barbecue and by the time you take a few of those shots you're already passed out meaning you're you're numb your tongue is numb you can't really taste nothing you don't enjoy the food they're like what's the point of that and you don't even remember what you did or didn't do it might lessen your nervousness maybe a little bit to be, so you can, you know, be a little bit more sociable with people. But other than that, I really didn't enjoy it. I just, it gives you lightheaded. You don't really know what happened during the party. Yeah, you don't feel the nervousness, but, you know, it's not really good, I guess. In my preference, anyway. That's how I feel about drinking. So I rather stay alert, you know, so I know what's going on. I can enjoy myself. You know, if you don't know what's going on, you're passed out. How could you really enjoy yourself? Uh, some people t take it as a good thing uh, but not really if you really want to remember the moment you kind of like to remember what happened <laughs> during that moment all right so we got that as clean as we can we're wherever we can reach let's say i think we can reach quite a bit so let me keep going i'm gonna go another one around here because i still feel like the, the the crankcase is hot so i assume the starter motor is cooling down it's like jacuzzi hot still right now. If I leave my hand on it, it's still jacuzzi hot. But you can see here the wires, I make sure it, it keep it away from its body. You can see there it's nice. And you know what we gotta reach over and find our stator wire again, tap it, and we're gonna do troubleshoot the alarm part. So we'll have to figure that one out as we go. So let's go and get this rim, rim mounted away. Oh. I think it'll be not that hard as long as that guy comes off easily. Uh, we can definitely um, put some some red Loctite on him again, and so hopefully the second round will be a charm, right? We'll see. I mean, red Loctite is supposed to be a permanent thing, but that guy came off like it was nothing. That's how strong these uh, mirror levers are. They work like almost like a heavy torque wrench to remove things. All right, so I'm going to rub it. Trying to go forward in more a little bit here that I kind of missed out on. I mean, you really just have to clean the lip, but I might as well just clean my whole engine. I mean, my whole wheel, the rear part, whatever I see is dirty, you know? Why, why stop there when you can just take care of it now, right? I mean, what are you waiting for? It's not going to do it on its own, that's for sure. I haven't seen self-cleaning yet. And if it did, it probably wouldn't be a good job. You know, it's nothing like hand detailing when you go to any kind of place. That's why you pay a little bit more for hand because it can reach areas and see things that the machine can't. But it could be pretty biased too. <laughs> uh. All right, so I think we got them. I think we got most of the, I just want to make sure I give a good rubbing alcohol straight to where the, all the rims area, at least, if anything, I get that part done. Again, we're gonna trace it one more time with rubbing alcohol, entirely just that rim area alone. So after we get this all squandered away and clean, I think we got it pretty much clean as far as we can see. Oh, you remember I JB Weld this crankcase, remember I cracked it? Uh, let's see if JB Weld held up to it. Mm. Remember that part where the bearing sits? I'm the, I'm probably the only one that has JB Weld in this bearing area right there. <laughs> Look at that, it still looks freaking damn good, right? Uh, I don't see no oil leaking out of it. It will be actually transmission oil, if anything, because that's where the bearing was from, was from the transmission side. It just cracked, 
but I know that crack there, that crack there, not that crap, sorry. That crack there could have led to the transmission bearing giving up on us. Let me see if I can squeeze this guy. To, uh, I can't. So let me bring back his tall legs here. Straighten him up. And there we go. We'll just take it for what is right here. All right, let me take my towel somehow to it. Let me see here. Can't get underneath, I can't, oh yeah, I can. There we go, look. Well, let me see if I can even feel my finger. See if there's any kind of, you know, kind of tension or anything. And I think my brother got mad at me one time. I think he dropped this engine. It only cracked, you know, surprisingly, when you drop it like straight up and down. It, the only thing it cracked is really this guy right here, the oil plate. And that was fine because I was replacing it anyway, right? It's like, oh, <laughs> that was okay with me. I was replacing it with the um, the Prima one. And then with the Prima one, we replaced it with this adapter. So we didn't need the Prima one either. So it was all good. All right, let's see how rubbing alcohol can actually help us take out water stains. You see these water stains here? They were hard to get out, right? So first of all, I'm going to clean it with what residue of, what residue of uh, alcohol that we have currently on the rag, which is not enough, but let's see if it's enough. Okay, let's see if I get in a light where you can see more of that guy. There you go. You guys see it? See this little hard water stain? Or whatever it is, rim stain. Probably from me cleaning it so much with water. Oh, look at that. It's gone. Well, maybe for momentarily. Not bad. And I was having a hard time getting it off at one point. Unfortunately, huh? See, I don't see any. I don't see any. Well, we're here ready. Let's inspect this guy again. I, I got a little tissue in my pocket or not. You know, I'm going to put these guys away. Well, we'll probably need them later, but not right now, right? So they need, you know, need to poke my... So these guys are awesome, though. All right, so let's go ahead and... Oh, I put it away already. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on where we are. We got to clean this guy so we get him rolling. Rolling, rolling, deep, bud. Uh, what was going to do? Oh, yeah, I put them away already. These were... The old ram mounts here. I mean the whole knobs and the key. Actually, I should keep the key in handy still because we might be needing it again for the rear brake lever because we're going to need to get ready to uh, red Loctite. I'm going to put a little bit more red Loctite this time. This guy, I'm not worried about. He's golden. But this guy here, when twisting him off, I want to make sure that he's got enough red Loctite. He was the difficult one there. Surprisingly, this guy was only difficult because of the throttle. And then still then, we got to figure out how come our throttle is not... You know, still on cruise control with us. So we got to consider that guy. All right, so let's go get back to cleaning here. Sorry, there's no break here for me and you. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's see if I can put this cat here real quick. You guys can see over my shoulder or under. Oh, I like this, maybe. Alright, the best. Nice. I always like to hear motorcycles coming through. I just don't like the big, huge, heavy Harley ones though, with the big exhaust. Don't really care for even the, even the you know the Ninja ones too. Just don't like the big exhaust, loud noise. You know, you can have a strong loud noise, but not like. But yeah, this this scooter gets up and go. It does not stall. Once I hit that throttle in there, it just it accelerates. So I'm really thrilled by that. It might be the Tata 232 cylinder head we put in with the 180 SSBG uh, 63 millimeter cylinder jug. So who knows? Could be a lot of factors. But I think we got a pretty good combo here. We just gotta get the throttle to, you know, help us out and keep it constantly uh, not move when we don't want it to key is in there okay so I'm gonna give it a good rub you see this guy right here I'm not just focusing on cleaning the rim strip I'm actually focusing on cleaning the entire rim area get some more rubbing alcohol I'm gonna just kind of twist the towel so let me pour some alcohol there we go look got a bit poor sorry I wasn't sure if you guys caught that last section uh, it looks like I have 56 more minutes to go I guess I am recording quite a bit here 
I'm not sure if there's any more I can delete. This might be the last 60 minutes I have. So I'll try to showcase it with taking out the rim tape and everything. But yeah, these shocks here have not hit my tires. So I am really thankful for that. You can see how much they come close. Well, you can't now because I have this little plate here. But I was just saying there, look at that. See that? You can see I can squeeze my towel in between so it's not really hitting it. I'll get this guy out of the way. So that I can drag my tires. I mean, I can drag my towel in through it. Well, see that? You can see that little guy here. He can come in easily. See, that's not really touching the tire. It would only touch, it's supposedly this guy right here would touch or this guy, but it didn't. So surprisingly, a guy in the way, oh look, I can even hire it up more. I'm such an idiot. Look at that, I can go real to the point where it won't touch at all because I can twist this however low I want. Now if I go like this, look, oh yeah, look at this guy here, he's rubbing. This guy here is rubbing, see? So, yeah, you can go like that, you'll be fine. Keep your tires away from that bounce. You should be good. Now it's always going to put a force upward, not downward, I believe. So, look at that. There you go. I just answered my own question there. So you can actually twist these little things, the spiral, so it doesn't come near close to gripping your your city grip tires here. So that was all taken care of. That was easy. I didn't know you can actually twist it. I thought these things were going to be stationed. All right. So we got we learned something else when we're cleaning. That's why I like about cleaning things, detailing. You learn so much more about your scooter. In fact, you, I would recommend you doing your own stuff maintenance-wise because you'd be surprised some of the stuff they're not that even hard to do. Like changing oil, changing transmission fluid, a few bolts here and there. Retapping it, getting a disposable container and a little funnel, you're good to go. And just keep a measurement of where your dipstick level should have been. And then you can actually buy the good stuff, put that money instead of labor toward the good stuff or chemical, not the cheap, you know, stuff. So that's how I call it an investment. Uh, in your education it's almost like making instant noodle that's how fast you could probably change your oil really just pop one bolt out that draw you know if you really want to do a thorough job then pop another one on the other side and then get a vacuum to set it in place sorry i'm still scrubbing right so i was going to be done shortly and i will i will i will okay see this guy here look i went to even to the shop rack something about it you gotta get your hand on there for it to really clean so let me see if I can get some more alcohol in this shop. Just lay them down like this. Maybe fold them a little bit more. Get some more exposed to the oil. I mean to the, the alcohol that we're trying to aim for. Look at that. Drink up, buddy. It's on the house. Okay, so there I got plenty of oil, gasoline here. I mean, <laughs> gasoline. Got plenty of rubbing alcohol here. I'm going to hit that dirt right there, that dull dirt area. See if I can do it. It's hard, but I think I got a little bit more on it. But I think that's about it. That's probably the best it can come up with. Oh yeah, we're gonna we were gonna open this. I, I kept the cap somewhere around here, right? Hopefully I didn't did I put the cap on the table. Took the cap out, but where the heck did it go? Clean this guy up a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I love it in this thing. I mean, it's just, it's just solidly, it's stationed there, so it's kind of nice. So far, we haven't dropped our scooter, knock on wood. Uh, I will take this guy off once I say for sure everything's done, the final, you know, turn around. But so far, now the exhaust here, he's, he's like cool to the touch again, so we're good. We can clean him up a little bit. Get a little uh, rubbing alcohol. Now, actually, when I shot an air vac through here, it squirted out whatever fluid coming out through here back. I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing. So it might have a little bit of exhaust leak, but only from this muffler joint area, which is probably common because there's not really anything to seal it. You know, we don't have any kind of gasket. I'm surprised they didn't give you one. But there's gasket in the head, cylinder head, which is important because you don't want exhaust leak there. Also, stain the whole one thing is stain the whole area, and then you might not have good compression uh, backflow and this guy right here is not even tight like like a, he's so loosened with oil but he never falls out with all the vibration I've been driving look see that look he twists right off the I mean I could probably drag him out if I wanted to but I don't want to <laughs> but yeah he hasn't 
He hasn't caused a problem for us. And I'm glad his D-ring didn't fall out either, right? Because all the vibration we've been doing. So that's an awesome thing. All right, we're almost done. I got the rear pretty much cleaned up as much as I can here. Just got a few more rubs here and there to go. Just want to make sure. Get all the little crits area. Like these guys here. I'm not sure why there's dirt there. But let me just finish it off with a towel. And then we're going to get the clean paper towel. And then we're going to go ahead and... Get started on preparing the rim tape shortly. And I guess I can wash my hands with alcohol, right? It's almost the same thing. Or wear gloves. That's fine. But you probably don't want your oil... To get into the rim tape so we'll make sure that happens all right so let's go and clean the sheet out and then also i forgot to test out the bleeder bolt there to see if we can get any oil red eye residue coming from the bleeder bolt so we are done with the rubbing alcohol i'm exhausted mm. there we go we got 51 more minutes there we go let's take a little bit of shop rag to this and again the bleeder yeah, I mean, he'll do, but he's not good enough for us. See that? I mean, he's good, actually, now. But he's very tricky. Just very tricky. Yeah, see, this guy's good. He's solid. We said we're going to actually spray some lithium grease in there, huh? Kind of help it. Maybe the friction not wear so much. But we didn't really do that, did we? Maybe we can, maybe we can't. But before we do that, let's just... Let's just focus on getting these guys here. Okay, what I'm gonna do is try to get a little tissue back in there again like we did last time. See if we can get a little bit of oil, I mean Blake fluid, coming out of them. So here we go. Probably very little. Again, I do not wanna, just can't do it right now. Tighten them one more quarter turn, or one eighth we could probably do it one eighth of a turn because if he breaks well nothing really gonna happen he just breaks but I want to do it while I have another bleeder bolt in hand but if he breaks we're gonna require a new assembly all right I'll let it keep it rest there for a second ah look at that see that that's for sure there's there's brake fluid right there. You can see him. You can see the color change just a second here. See that? That's definitely wet from brake fluid. So yeah, it's still coming out little by little. It's unfortunate. He's drivable, but unfortunately, his rear is not gripping responsibly enough for us to consider him. So... Look at that. All right, so we know he's still leaking a little bit. Oh well, we figured it out. Let's get some rubbing alcohol. We're gonna do one final wipe with the clean towel. So let's cap this guy back. He's not coming out like crazy, but still coming out. You don't want him to come out, period. All right, so let's do this. We'll get another replacement bleeder bolt on his way, so it should begin in the next week or so. And we'll add that final touch to it. So in the meantime, let's do a little quick final assurance wipe to make sure we got all around the rim. I think I can still reach from. Unfortunately, I still not get not. Oh, here we go. Soak it up pretty damn good right there. Unfortunately, look, I cannot get to this guy here. He still has his hard water stain here. See that right there? And try look i'm gonna take this clean little dot here let's go in for it look at that it's still there so i guess he's a he's a permanent thing uh, so it's fine look at that we cleaned it quite a bit so we didn't get that much dirt back off so it's a good thing for us so there we go i want to make sure i rub it i want to make sure all of it gets a coat of rubbing alcohol just to make sure since it dries up so easily, we can just do one pass like this. It's coming back from outside. So I got the whole 360, really. I have to reach my hand from the other side, but still the whole 360 is doable here. All right, so this whole 360 is 
taken care of. Okay, it's time to get to the other side. Let that dry up. Let's get to the other side here. So I can get the whole 360 in him. So we make sure there's no dirt at all whatsoever connected to our Taylor 33 hyper tape. I think with all this prepping here, I gotta build up my strength for <laughs> putting them uh, on accurately. Okay, let me go and get another dab of alcohol just to make sure I'm not using very little. Oh, like I have plenty, right? So much is coming out the other end. See that little dirty right here? Let's see if I can get that guy off. That must be a hard scrape because it's not coming off. Oh, look at that. Still get some dirt off. Might be a little bit from the tire, but who knows? Catch it. Catch me if you can. I just did that. Let's see if I can get my arm underneath here. Finish the one up top. All right, so there we go. We got everything that we wanted. I think it's rubbed off now. These are tubeless tires. They'll tell you on here too. And also you want to probably re, like get the air out, recirculate with new air. Yeah, it's too bad. I can't get enough rubbing alcohol to get these guys off here. These like hard water stains or something, or hard oil stains. That's fine. Hey, well, at least I knew a way to spiral this before. I didn't realize that. You could have spiraled it. <laughs> Let me go and clean my cannon. Uh, the thing about the wheel guard is hopefully, that's what I was going over there for. Look at that, see? How it shoots up all that dirt from underneath here. Now I'm gonna get that in. Let me get take care of the rim first. I'll come back and get this little dirt that's kind of splattered on our tank a little bit there. <laughs> so that, it might gotta shoot up way a little bit more. So that's what our wheel guard's for. Uh, the way it's not bad, we can clean it up like this. We might not need the wheel guard really. Because if anything, it just gets on here, right? Over here is blocked, pretty secure. And it's easier to clean this guy versus the, the wheel guard, which I'll show you in a little bit. There's a wheel guard for the scooter, but I really haven't used it. All right, so let's go back to this guy here. Clean him with the clean shop towel. Let's reload him up with some. Look how much we use, not that much, see? We didn't go crazy or anything like that. There we go. This guy is easy to clean because he doesn't have anything blocking him. I almost can do it one hand swing up and down to be done with. But the rim sure looks nicer than it did before though. That's one good thing out of this deal. We got to chance to really detail our rim cleanly. All right. The instruction keeps on wanting to fly away. The Taylor instruction. I was trying to use it to cover him. Here, this is what I'll do. I'll put his envelope here. It came in an envelope. I thought it was like some kind of promotional junk mail or something. I was about to throw it away, actually. It came in one of these kinds set up, right? So I'm thinking to myself, it must be a junk mail. You know, like a little Comcast offer or something like that. All right, so. 
but it's not just the real deal. Here we go. Last one here. I think that's why I'm out of breath. I think my belt's getting too tight. Back here, let me take it off. Oh, I can breathe. Totally breathe. Oh, I feel like like 50 pounds is lifting off of me. I'll make sure these guys aren't cracked or anything. Look like it for a little bit. Okay, putting some more here. There we go. Get them all soaked. I think that's good enough. Good for, I guess, cleaning cuts and wounds, huh? Back to so if you get cut in the process, just rubbing alcohol will clean it up for you. All right, almost there. Let's see how much I can go further this way. Should we get good practice on the one rim that's more easier to do? I think we should. All right, so here we go. I still have some cleaning alcohol on me, right? So I'm going to take this, finish this rag off. You know where we're going to get underneath there. There's the wheel guard here. This original scooter came with this guy. But I don't know if there's a way that we can actually integrate him in there. Maybe, maybe not. So let me clean this guy real quick on the top. Get all his dirtiness out of there. Got a little bit of alcohol still on here. See, it's easier to clean this way. Because once he's in that little rim guard, if we can even put him in there, I don't think we can easily squeak, clean them, I don't think. So over here, all you can do is hit the tank, really. Hit the tank in some of this plastic area, which I wish it would go, go over a little bit more. We can, I'd rather have it, you know, scrape the, scrape the plastic than the tank, because the tank is all there is to it. Oops, sorry. My elbow there, give you guys a punch. Come on. Oops. There you go. Took it a while, huh? It's like it's vibrating. Yeah, I don't want to rub the paint off. I can always coat it with some more. It's not a big deal, but I think that's about it. Oh, it got a little bit here too, by the way. See that when it's flat. It really does take a number. So we got this guy right here as well. Gonna clean that all that dirt off of it. So there we go, we got that guy cleaned away. All right, we're ready. Are you really ready? This is it. This is the final. Let's do it on one side here. Uh, okay, let's go and do this rough thing here where we probably could have mounted this. I believe this guy right here goes right here, probably hook. So he will come around. I'm not sure he comes this way, really. I think he does come around this way. This way right here. So if he was to come, he'll squeeze through here, supposedly. And I believe he sits this guy right here. See that? Look at that. Perfectly in there, right? Yeah, this this uh, little rim guard still might actually be useful because he doesn't feel like he's actually putting pressure on the tire. I didn't think it worked. I really didn't. Um... But let's see. Let me make sure it's still loose nicely. Once we get them all mounted, right? Look at this. I think we might have a chance. When this guy's mounted here, and this guy's mounted properly here, it lifts him up, so supposedly. You might rub a little bit, but we can probably file some stuff down or even stretch them out. Yeah, this might work. Will this be stretched out with this guy here? Is that what it is? Maybe. 
Let's see if I can put him through here. Yeah, I could probably... I don't know. I might, I might be able to loosen this bolt here and put him through there too. So yeah, we'll definitely keep him on here. Because we might actually use him. Well, for the meantime, right now, we can't because we're putting our rim tape, right? We'll leave it in for right now. Let's go and get started the rim tape, shall we? Before we lose all sign of focus here. It should have been dry by now. So I think we're okay. I'm going to go and get some gloves just in case they requested me to. What we do is only wear one pair. I'm going to go ahead and put the pair that I'm actually using to hold him. It's kind of hard to work with gloves. You really want to feel those stickers. But they say you can't, so here we go. It's nice and clean now, right? So here's our stuff. <laughs> and here you guys go. Ball and Nami. So this is what I've been waiting for the whole night. 24 hours, can't wait for the sun to come out to show you this. I mean, I am super stroked on this guy. I was probably like a kid on Christmas. This is right here. We're ready about to put the custom rim tape here on. So super stoked. So let's check this out. Let's start, how we're gonna start. Should we start from the very top and keep peeling our way down? That might be an option there. Right. See, it doesn't give individual, so once you peel it off, you're pretty much there, right? This is a clean. It seems, let's see here. There we go. See, I don't got my oil on here. This is, got to do it really carefully. Okay. You notice I'm using the hand in my glove here, right? So no oil gets on it. Ah! It is super sticky though. Not sure you want to peel the whole thing off if you're confident. Uh, we have to start somewhere. Golly, this is weird. So weird. Do you start like turning it as you go or you feel where to turn or? I'm gonna do it slowly by slowly. Is it guys? We're going forward. There's no going back. I feel like there's a lip here that helps us to pretty much align it so it won't be too bad of a problem. But I'm gonna do it really carefully. Okay, look at that, I got one piece already. Okay, there you go. Look, it's shaping itself. It's not a bad, bad thing. You can lift up a little bit too if you're helping yourself. There we go. <gasps> did I want it this far? Or did I want it? There you go. I'm going to force this guy in a little bit. One strip down. One strip down, guys. So far, it doesn't look cheesy either. <laughs> All right, so the other one they said, you know, don't overlap more than three-fourths of an inch. So pretty much just telling you, don't be wasteful. And besides, doesn't look good overlapping anyways. Try I'll try not to overlap, but I know you want to overlap a little bit just to make sure there's no break point. You know, I really wish they did, though, was cut little stripes here and there, you know, make it look like gross, like racer type. That would be really cool. I'm sure they can make it if you request that kind of setup. But, okay, so here we go. That's because it's not sticking to my um, latex, so that's an awesome, 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 awesome deal. You can see here, I'm trying to get into really the crit area. Let's see if you guys can see it really up close. So I'm going to try my best so you can overlap it, but you, you probably want to overlap a little bit because it creates like a little, it's like a weird... I don't know how to describe it yet. Oh, thought I had it on there. Guess not. This is nerve wracking. Look 
guess this is bending it, maybe. Notice here I'm not moving the sheet entirely away until I'm confident. And I'm almost touching it every every other half an inch. Or every inch, right? Alright. Wanna do a good job. I guess you don't really need any special tools, just your fingertips. <laughs> And just a little bit common, common nerve training here. There we go. Don't want to pull him in. Don't want to stay up on the lip. It looks like this guy's riding up on the lip a little bit. So I'm going to try to. He moves a little bit for you. Let's see, I'm trying to bring him upward. guy here is like coming up to the lip I guess I don't know if he's coming up to the lip or I'm seeing him that way that's fine all right so the next one I mean we don't have to do it all complete we can keep going until we see no you know exposure wise we have to turn the wheel around so it doesn't mean like we have to do it complete complete Golly, I hate this guy right here. I still want to move him around. So let me let me get a little piece of power. The reason why is he actually is going on the lip a little bit on the edge. And I don't like that. So let me go get a little plastic picker. Or not a razor blade, but the plastic one. I guess this plastic one is useful. Let me try to peel this one guy out of there. Keep my hands clean, right? Okay, so I'm going to try to do is peel them off a little bit. There we go. I know I couldn't make up my mind. I was trying to squeeze him to correct him. There we go. Come on. There we go. See, it was, this is where I messed up on it. It was going a little bit. Not where I wanted him to. No, he's going too up. I mean, he's going too down now. Yeah, now he's going too down. I think that's okay. I think that's cool with me here. All right, there we go. I'm a perfectionist, so I do have to make sure I do it the perfectly the way I see fit. Okay, the next one. I'm not sure it's easier just to I you, know, you just can't tear it. That's the problem. I don't think you can. Let's see. If you tear it, you might get the other one dirty. See. So you gotta take your chances and just kind of strip it. All right, so let's do this guy. One more, we can start the other side. I'm only getting like a, maybe a centimeter the most overlapping. I mean, not a centimeter, like almost a millimeter. So that's perfect. This is probably really annoying for someone who's really tedious on precision. Because you can't tell if it's climbing and you can't tell if it's going down. All right, so I can peel it supposedly all the way almost. All right, three down, or supposedly, this is our third one. All right, 
don't not let it touch each other. <laughs> it's gonna be over for you if you have that. Almost kind of let it walk on its own a little bit, see where it goes. Because it looked like it's curving on its own for you. It's amazing how they know, like, for 13 inch rims, how much you need for precisionly turning it, you know? It's kind of amazing to me. There we go. I think we got it. I think we got it all the way down, you guys. Here we go. This is one. This is one full circle half here. I think it's good. It's not going. Try not to make it go up, but more like going back down. See? Yeah. Like a spaceship. So I guess if you rub it, no, you can't probably do it this way either. Right? Let's put a little pressure on this. So we got three strips so far, and I think they're pretty damn perfect almost on there. Okay, let's go work on the other side, because I don't want to start trying to go underneath this guy. It's not worth it. Just spin the wheel, you know what I mean? We, we'll take our time, do a nice job. Okay, let's see what we do with this guy here. The material is pretty good, good, you know what I mean? It's not like heavy duty or anything, but it feels pretty good. But let's see how long it lasts. I mean, you got water, dog pee, <laughs> so we'll see. Okay, so let's see if I can get this guy in the curvature area here. I guess I can start from the very tip, or maybe I'll try to even it up. Let's see where I started. I know it's not going to be like a, maybe I shouldn't. All right, so I look like I started from, let's see, this guy here, yeah. I look like I started from right here, this kind of needle head here. If I'm following my rims correctly, yeah. Looks like I got him to like right there. So we're going to start the same way. We can start like that. like a barely enough for it nothing more nothing less yeah it would be nice to have a tool I got 22 more minutes you guys hopefully I can finish this wrap and hit the light on it for you I think what took her time was our riding adventure. That was fun though. It wasn't it was not not worth it. That was just amazing experience. To ride on a 180 with a 232 cylinder head Tata. <laughs> it's probably the closest I'll get to a 232, by the way. I never rode any engine bigger than that. Um, 150. Now I didn't even get a chance to ride the 171. Um, so the closest next one I got was the 180 here. And the 180 feels so much more powerful than the 150 that I had. I don't know what the 171 feels like because I didn't ride one, so unfortunately. I just only did a dry installation video on that, which I know I got a lot of reps for that one, but hopefully they understand it was just a, a, loner, a loner setup for jumping to the next one. Okay, I need to really get my fingers out of here. <laughs> And I need to sort of straighten his attitude up here. Where is he going with this? And why is he doing this? All right, so let's see here. Eee, a, lot, a lot more than I wanted. That's fine. Let's see what it does on its own, right? Look at that. It has almost like a, a brain of his own. 
Now I can come from the top and use my other fingers to rub it only but not touch the adhesive part. So that's fine there. Look at that. I just don't want to get into the plate. I want to get more on the, on the flat side. So that's what I'm doing, I guess, by doing it this way. Controlling the curvature of the flat side. I think I'm doing a good job. Just don't want to make sure it keeps going lower and lower to the incline area. Okay. Not bad. There we go. All right, so this is it. Look at that little curvature bubble there. Get it all squeezed out. Super. Nice. All right, this whole, all right, turn the wheels around. Now I got the whole other side here to do on the bottom, which is the other one's the same way, which is good that we actually overlapped it the same. That way it'll be easier for us. So let's go and start with this guy now. I guess it's getting easier, easier with a little practice. <laughs> just blowing your latex glove a little bit just to make sure you don't have any captured um, dirt. Pretty cool, very cool. So yeah, I don't feel too bad it's touching this with latex because I know it's not my skin oil is actually going all the way in. There we go. Kind of thumb it in there. Feel it first there. Maybe get a little bit more. Oh, oh. Thumb it. Okay. Keep it to be able to stick there. So far, no air bubbles. I think we got one more to go, maybe. I wonder if you get like the big 17 inch one and you can cut it to make it 13 inch. I don't know. Because I think it's all a matter of curvature, right? So you would think you can or you can't. Because right now, it takes almost, ex I'm not sure how many minutes strips yet so far. This is a 13 inch rim set. So let's see how many strips we use so far. Keep in mind, we still have three on the other side. And this is our fourth one on this side here. Oh. You can move it slightly down. Alright, so I go I go one pass like this. Kind of nice to be able to do that. Okay, you can see here it's like half an inch left. So I guess you do cut it. Um, because we didn't really overlap much at all. We overlapped my maybe a good two millimeters. So you can see here how many strips we use so far? I think it starts with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We use seven, so three in the back, four here. So that's seven. Seven. So let's see how many give it. They give us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen plus seven, you're looking at twenty-two. So I guess what they mean to say, I guess they gave us a little bit, but we're gonna have to start cutting. That's uh, I didn't prepare a scissors for it that time, but yeah, we might want to get a pair of scissors. I think yeah, I feel more easier with a pair of scissors. So let me grab a pair of scissors real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, I can either put, cut it with a pair of scissors or better yet, take a razor blade and know exactly how much I need to really complete the job here. So this gives me a good idea here real quick. Let's just dab this here. Ew. All right, so yeah, a pair of scissors would probably be better. So let's do this guy. We can start any one, it's the same. No matter, we start at the top or the bottom. I'm just gonna go and grab the bottom now since we're already here in the bottom. Or should we just continue the top, keep it all consistent? All right, we'll continue the top. Just in case we wanna put it away, huh? We'll have some extra there. I think we probably will have a little extra. Okay, there we go. See here, we're overlapping just a little bit. Ugh. Not to keep my finger out of there first. Eh, come on, stick.
there you go see this is where the cutting part is now so I got to measure how much I want to cut in a little bit here it's no big deal I know exactly where I want to cut it. I cut it past this little slit right there, this little marking. Kind of helped me out a little bit there. Yeah, too late now. Look, not a bad snap, huh? Not a bad snap. Let's see how much I really overlapped. I don't think I overlapped much. Okay, let's make sure. Yeah, look at that. Perfectly. <laughs> Just another two millimeter. See that? Two millimeter, not two centimeter. Two millimeters. Hold that there. Look at that. That is a perfection right there. Nice. Super nice. That wasn't hard at all. We got it. We got one complete rim, you guys. This is it. Now let's go over there. Before I'm confident to do this, let me just take my finger, give it a good press of each area. That way I know I at least tried my best the first time around. There's nothing worse than having a loose tape and all of a sudden you get water into it. That just ruins your whole day. Good material. Any air pockets or anything, be gone. If it climbs up here, you can see a little bit of air pocket. All right, that we're good. We are good. Let's take our, let's see how much we cut off. Look at that, not very much left of that guy. So we're probably not gonna be able to use him. He'll probably be part of the six inch remaining. They said they give you one extra, right? I don't know. Seven plus seven is 14. So they probably actually give you closer to probably one strip and eight inches just to be double check. Okay, let's do this guy now. All right, so here we go. Let's get him nice and clean. He's pretty much the same. Same guy, same route. Things like this just takes out of you because you're like so focused, you know. In fact, I was hoping to try to troubleshoot the remote start at the same time, but we'll see how much energy I have left. I'd rather work during the daytime and not worry about nighttime because you can sleep so good when you work hard at daytime. When you don't do anything, lounge around couch potato in the daytime, and then you're still laying there at nighttime, you have a hard time sleeping. But for me, I think it was a mixture of both that and because I didn't do nothing yesterday. I was like, Ugh. you know, I should have um, stayed active. I didn't stay active because I was waiting for my handlebars to dry, which it did one, but didn't do the other. <laughs> I knew that was guy was probably going to give me some trouble at the end, but he did. So I know red Loctite will be his his cure as soon as we, you know, we get there to him again with red Loctite. All right, so here we go. Almost coming apart. Fine, you can come off. Oh, look, I cleaned the brake calipers, right? If that guy landed on there, got dirt from the brake caliper, and then came back down here. So that's why it's always good to clean something because you don't know what the effect of it is going on to the next guy. See that? He's always attaching to the brake caliper. The brake disc, I mean.
super, where am I at? All right. go unfortunately this little piece here I don't know will he do it no he won't he won't do it for us so we need to do the same thing again we gotta cut it so once we get to that point hopefully we get a good cut again we got lucky maybe hopefully <laughs> all right so we complete one rim here now I didn't even start the rear one yet but we will It isn't that hard to apply. Well, that's a good thing. That's probably why they don't give you a tool because they're thinking, really? You need a tool just to hold a perfectly, you know, tip. Oh, he's coming apart. Can't tell if he's a, a more than a millimeter or he's not getting, because it's both kind of gray color. I think he's getting on there. Can't sort of tell. Come on, I gotta hold this guy down. Why? Get this guy the, the, the lift up out from the adhesive joint. Almost. Uh. Oh, lift it up, get all the air bubbles out. Almost there. Need to cut him soon. All right, there we go. Let's give him a chop, shall we? A little bit hard to get at this angle now, but we can still do it. Let's see here. How far are you? E. Don't want to touch him. I really don't want to touch him. Not that I don't want to, but I can't. Okay, so I'm going to peel him back. Prepare. There we go. Look at that. That is incredibly <laughs> skilled there. <laughs> nice. There you go. I think I don't think I regret any part of this guy here. Speak, uh, speaking of regret, let's go ahead and put this guy back in here. Let's see if it actually laid in the same spot as the other guy. Curious. See if we did good on him or not. There he goes. He's right there. All right. We complete one rim. Front, uh, both sides, left and right. Oh. All right, we're ready. Ready to start in the rear one? We have about five more minutes, so let's do what we can on this rear one. How we start is gonna be up to us. See how much we can go. Maybe I can lay low a little bit. You guys can come with me. Let's kinda of lay low and get much as we can from this half to this half. All right. So we can start from where we were still using this guy here. Feels so good just to lay around. <laughs> we got the air. Are we getting a break here? All right. 
maybe we could take this whole strip out. I just got but I'm gonna take it out. I want to make sure I hold it apart from each other. Oh man, not that confident. So I brought it back his little paper. Come on, buddy. Don't get nervous. Okay, we're going for it. When you're comfortable in a good position, you feel like you could focus more of your energy instead of being uncomfortable, doing the things that you are comfortable. There we go. I feel comfortable here. I got half of them down, so this other half is coming on its way. Oh, this is so nice. This is so good. It feels so good just to lay beside and do this. This is probably one of the most relaxing moments right now. In addition to the, the stress of riding and the thrill, you gotta have both comfort and a sense of spontaneity, not knowing what's gonna be your next. <laughs> bump turn all right so there we go beautiful you can see i took every single bit of time to do one it takes me like almost three minutes right but it's worth the three minutes because it'll show in your rushingness okay next one one down out of this rear wheel uh it still looks weird though i mean it looks like it's kind of not all the way fully pulled out. Looks like something like a, you know, like a rim that needs to pull out is the tack. <laughs> but hopefully it'll start lighting up for us. That's the main part. Is there like another film to remove away from it? I don't know. I think this is it. This is the reflector. It's okay. We want it to blend in a little bit gray too. We didn't want it. You know what's great is the red one will go great with like some kind of like a black rim. But since we have chrome rims, um, unless we want to go green and stick out like a sore thumb, then red would do the same. I think would have been the proper one which is to get gray to blend it in more because they had like several colors you can see here purple baby blue you know all kinds of cool colors too but i think you know we're going a little bit more conservative on the color i think this is gonna be good there's people who mix them too they put like um it was really cool i seen one that put like red and then green and then yellow like a tri-color so that looks cool too but i think our scooter is not that colorful we're more gearing toward like the black and white stealth look so this will be perfect for us okay three more minutes you guys and i apologize i'm gonna have to finish this one and hopefully you guys will see me put red lock tight next time or maybe i'll have another extra it always gives you like an extra three more minutes before it actually says okay that's it no more recording for the day before you empty out the storage which i can't do that yet because until i upload the videos that i just did or transfer them to my computer and then upload them. Whoa! Look at that one. The whole, the whole shebang came off here. Let me see if I can sneak this guy in here. Grab him back out. No! Don't want to be oppressed. This is not what I want you to do. I mean, he's perfect as he is. I mean, I might be able to go for it. Should I? Nah. I'm going to go and get that little rubber thing plastic little scraper there I'm not gonna ruin my I'm not gonna rush anything Let's see this is not that bad off there we go Very cool. All right, I think we can go one more maybe. I'm not sure yet. Let's see. Be hard to see or no? Uh, a little bit hard to see it, but I think we can manage still. So I'll go one more from here. Or should I just turn the wheel and, you know, do it the right way? 
get the other half circle down. I think it should. Don't want to rush it. All right, guys, one more minute and that's it. So I'm going to start with this guy the same, whatever I can see here. Let's see where he started from. Let's see what tire sort of level he's at. Or we can work our way down where it doesn't really matter. So it looks like starting right here in this guy here. So I look at the markings of the tire and then I trace back 4915. He's starting around the nine area. I don't think there's like a 4919 here, but I know there's a pattern here though. I can use as a reference this pattern right here, but it's just a little like maybe a half an inch down from this pattern. So going, this pattern's right there. So half an inch down. Let's start right here. That way when we turn them, they'll be the same, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's about half an inch. Here, this is how much I have left. Not bad, huh? I got two full strips plus one, two, three, four pieces of the short strip. You can see here in the rear wheel one, I had to do a little uh, sort of a 